This isn't particularly difficult to find online, but let's get straight down to the problem and say that it seems 10-bit XAVC files are no longer supported in DaVinci Resolve Free. And that's a real shame. It's a change that they've made from 14, and I noticed that during all the beta stages of 15, my uh, XAVCL 10-bit files were coming up as media offline. And to be honest, I thought that was just because they hadn't added support for it yet, you know, in the beta versions. However, last week or so, they released the final version of 15, which is on the screen here, and still no support. Let's just quickly show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to add some media into here. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. All right, we've got different clips in here. F firstly, I have um, a uh, an XAVCL 8-bit file. And you can see there we've got a thumbnail that I'm able to scrub through. And here we have an XAVCS HD 8-bit file. So this is an, actually an MP4 file. It's um, X standard XAVCS, doesn't support 10-bit. And that scrubs through fine. You can see that there on the uh, thumbnail. And here is my XAVCL HD 10-bit files. If I put these in the actual timeline itself, then we get, we get to this one and we just have media offline. Oddly, ProRes, 10 bits, fine. DNX HR, which is, I think, 4K in this case, 10 bits. Absolutely fine. No problems there at all. So it's a bit of a strange move by Blackmagic, I think. Uh, they're clearly trying to push people to the studio version, which, don't get me wrong, is a very reasonable product. And as a result of this, um, I have now invested in the studio version so this has obviously worked perfectly for them in that respect but i just find it still a bit of an odd move i don't know whether this is impacting other file types that are uh, 10 bit and in this similar sort of h264 or some form you know some form of compression similar to that or whether this is just a sony thing you know an xav so a problem with the xavc L and potentially, I don't know, what about the intraframe? What about the I, X, um, X, X, A, V, C, I? I, d I don't know what is actually being affected here. And I welcome any feedback as to whether you have been affected by this and whether or not uh, you, you, know, you, you come from a Panasonic and you're using Panasonic camera or something and it's uh, still impacting you with some 10-bit footage. But strange decision. So we're going to see people impacted using, in my case, the Z9, the Z90 camera, uh, the Z150 cameras, the FS5, um, which outputs um, its HD for, uh, footage in the H in the 10-bit 422 codec, and nobody is going to be able to use the DaVinci free version anymore. And just a bit of an odd one. Why why have they chosen to do that now? Just to make people buy it? I don't know. Well, what I'm going to do now anyway is I'm going to actually install the studio for studio version. I haven't done that yet. And uh, see and hope that this does actually work. So if you are looking for something online to read in relation to this, is you can simply find it on the Blackmagic forum. As I say, this is nothing uh, that isn't out there already. Broken Sony MXF files. And um, there's some question, will it work, won't it work? Not sure, not sure. Send me a sample, blah, 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 blah. And we do get to a point that uh, there is some confirmation from someone called Dwayne Maggot. I don't know who that is who says only Resolve Studio 15 can decode 10-bit Sony MXF files. Resolve 15 can decode 8-bit Sony MXF files. Fantastic. So, you know, some proper confirmation there from Blackmagic Design DaVinci support saying that this is the case. And in my case, I, you know, I honestly don't mind buying the software. It's a very reasonable price now. Uh, it costs in the region of about £275. If you use software, that is a very reasonable price to pay, particularly as they're not after a monthly subscription, and this will probably last a number of versions um, onwards into the future. So 
I have no objection to buying the software. It's just I'm used to being able to use what I need for free. I don't need the additional features that the studio version gives me. Uh, and this is a sudden hit, you know, to suddenly have to pay that money without anyone, I suppose, it was, I don't know, They more, maybe they should have promoted it or just let people know that this was the case a bit more. I, I don't know. It's just a bit annoying, isn't it, really? <sighs> Anyway, there you go. That's the uh, thread that covers that one. If I go to here, I have now installed this. So I'm going to um, enter my activation key now. And it's the first time I've ever done this. Right, let's give it a go. So it's the first time it's loaded DaVinci Resolve since this install. So it will take a little bit longer at uh, initial startup. It usually does. All I'm really interested to see here is whether it plays that file now or not. And let's put these files into the project. Don't change. And there we go. We now have, if I can just Mate, if I can just drop this one into the timeline because this is the 10 bit clip. And yeah, that's working absolutely fine. So there we go. Just uh, just wanted to cover this in a video just because it is out there, but um, I didn't really see too much uh, information in a video. Just wanted to test it having purchased Studio and just confirm that these 10 bit clips do now work correctly in the studio version of uh, DaVinci Resolve.